it's been a little while since I made a Scripps video. Um, didn't want to cover any of the war topics around my area because of some operational security stuff. But I wanted to give an update on this and sort of just show off the uh, power, I guess, would be the word, of a TIGA assault against uh, my neighbor here, TG. So TIGA's been wailing at these rooms for about a week now. And what's pretty incredible about it is how many squads he's able, he's able to field. Um, if you look right here, every one of these little clusters is a new squad that's forming up and moving in. So I'd say there's probably an excess of 50 creeps on their way to rooms. While he also has uh, squads over here, over here, over here. Um, this looks like it's a squad as well. I didn't believe that Tiga had the economy to be able to pull off an attack like this and be able to keep it up for so long, but um, I'll just show you a battle re replay of this uh, room right here. Um, this is room E2 S19 on shard 2. Um, so you can see how far back this battle goes. Um, you know, over, you know, one, three. Hundred and sixty thousand ticks of battle footage here. And it's just non stop. I mean he's fielding looks like 30, 40 creeps in this room. Uh, most of these are unboosted because he's already break, broken through the wall and there's not much, too much uh, defense to deal with, but it's still pretty impressive uh, how many creeps he's got in this room. All of them in these squad formations, uh, just slowly pounding away at this. Um, but you can see here, he's almost bro he broke through that wall there, but it was 153 million hit points um, and it was chewed entirely over about 140,000 ticks. Um, so these, this is just the cleanup crew here. Let's take a look at some of the other squads that are sort of moving in and some of the, the battle footage um, that's going on right now. Uh, this is the next room he's trying to break through. So you've got uh, these quad squads. Um, let's see, is this a... Okay, so Tiga has lost a few troops. It looks like um, we have a bunch of defenders from TG, but these aren't boosted, so unfortunately they're not going to be very effective against these quad squads. Um, it is interesting, though, that Tiga is using a formation with no tough parts. That's uh, going to make him a lot weaker. And he also has this problem with the time it takes to live. Um, by the time they reach up to this room here, you know, this squad, for instance, is only down to 400. Let's roll it back and uh, sort of confirm those numbers. But I'm curious what happened here, too. So let's go back. So these have 300 ticks to live, approximately. Looks like uh, TG's defenders are moderately effective at keeping these get at bay, making them balance. Um, if you watch my other videos about the um, Tigger's attack on my W14 S9, um, you may recognize some of these strategies. Uh, let's roll it back there. I want to see specifically the the point where he lost some creeps. So it's not conclusive why they broke formation there, but yeah, it looks like that one was lost basically just a tower fire. These aren't boosted towers uh, with, um, they're not using any power creeps here to uh, defend, but yeah, it looks like that the first creep to fall was a, um, medical unit and that dips into the uh, healing power of the 
uh, the group formation. Without tough parts, it's going to be hard to tank that, that damage. So you can see them one by one sort of fall away. And these guys aren't that effective um, on their own. You only got, what, 200, 400 attack uh, damage, uh, which isn't going to do much against these walls, especially with active defense and uh, wall repair. Uh, these guys seem to be working pretty quickly. Uh, but one of the biggest issues here is TG doesn't have any energy reserves, so uh, not much you can do here without um, sort of an influx of energy. And that's going to be very difficult to pull off because uh, energy is right now at such a high price. On shard 3, it looks like energy is going for 0.24. Selling orders go for 0.43, which is doesn't make any sense. Why you know, The seller means that the buyer would have to take the energy transmission cost. So why would they pay more uh, than this buying cost where they don't have to deal with the, the energy transport cost? But here on shard 2, you still have um, energy prices of 0.223. So at that rate, you just you can't buy enough energy to be able to hold out during these long-term sieges. So you're relying on your back, um, your back line to be able to push that um, you know, tier 3 boost and um, energy up to your front line. But the main problem here is just the number of creeps Tiga is fielding. And it's always interesting to see here because he's not that far from me. I mean, he's uh, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 rooms here. So he's going to be pretty low tick to live if he tried to attack this directly. Uh, but there's probably something he could do to shave off a little bit of travel time. Or he could go um, you know, from some of these outposts. But we'll see what happens over the next few uh, weeks. Um, I'm hoping to see TG bounce back from this, but it's going to be hard to do without him popping a safe mode or some other strategy here to rebuild this room. But by popping a safe mode, he's going to open up the other rooms to attack. And it's going to be hard to uh, you know, defend in the long run if he's starting to lack energy. So Yeah, decent stockpiles though of tier three boosts. Uh lots of stuff they could do with these. Um boosted uh, range defenders might be a good strategy for him. Uh he has got twenty three thousand uh range attack boost. Uh, so a few squads of those would force Tiga to um, put a lot more resource into XGH02. Um, and XGH02 is one of the more um, the lengthier production times. Let me pull up the stats here. Scripts, resources. So let's see if I can go full screen with this guy. Mineral compounds. So here is the production time. So to build out XGH02 is actually the high, uh, well, one of the uh, longest production times. So one thing TIG has been able to do, it looks like, is you know by taking this resource out of uh, his squad's um, cost, he's you know, freed up a lot of uh, lab time to be able to mass produce boosts. Um, but we'll see how long this can last. If TG starts uh, boosting his defenders, uh, that would push all of um, Tiga's troops uh, to range one away from main walls. And oh, to range two around main walls, making it impossible for him to use um, the attack parts he was uh, fielding on some of those creeps. So that could be an effective strategy for TG to... Um, make his defense a little bit more um, powerful. But he's still going to run into some problems because now he'd, he'd have to be producing XGH, XUH2O. Uh, 
But one of the things T uh, TG has going for him is these front line rooms have great ramparts on the center course. These ramparts extend back multiple squares, um, which means that any of these uh, front line defenders are going to be uh, well protected. So uh, as long as you can deal with things like this, where you know controller is exposed here, but that's not the it's not the end of the world for him. Um, power's already been enabled here, so either Tiga came in and you know, started an assault in this room, or um, there was a power creep in the the past. I don't see a power spawn though at the time at this time, so maybe this is activated by Tiga. Um, but here another example of a frontline room low on energy. I don't know if Tiga's attack squads uh, take into account. Oh, Tiga's attack. Um, sort of computations, take into account mineral and um, energy storage is of frontline rooms, but uh, that could be one of the reasons why these rooms triggered attacks while Taki down here has not received ta attacks. Uh, let's go look at one of these frontline rooms. Yeah, so decent energy storage here, about half a million between storage and terminal with 127 million ramparts. Um, well, another thing that Taki's got going for her is uh, the sheer number of towers on the front line here. So Tiga would have to deal with um, having only a single space to deploy troops on uh, while having sort of like the flickering troops on the back row there while trying to tank the damage from six towers and the damage from potential range defenders or uh, melee defenders. So. A lot of great aspects to this defense, um, but I'm not sure if even uh, something like this defense could hold up against a just this massive onslaught. You're looking at basically continuous attacks from about 50 different creeps, so that's about 12 quad squads that Tiga can deploy. He actually is using um, frontline rooms and some of his, uh, you know mid mid range rooms as well to deploy these troops um, so you know the downside of that is that you have a very short tick to live uh, on these backline rooms but it is giving him a little bit of advantage to sort of crack these rooms defenses you gotta out uh, output enough offensive force to be able to deal with wall repair and um, tower damage for long enough to be able to drain storages and terminals and it looks like Tig has been able to do that over the uh, last few weeks but uh, there's there's TG's front line let's look at some of his back line here um, yeah not seeing a lot of remote mining from let's see this room here yeah it looks like he's not remote mining from a lot of these rooms yeah like no remotes here so it's possible he's sort of uh, being starved out for CPU as well, which is going to create some other problems for him. Um, but let's let's take this room for instance, uh, see how it's doing. I I would expect it to have a little bit more energy than your typical room. Um, no, never mind. It looks like um, twenty six thousand there and forty thousand here, so about sixty k. Uh, this room is getting a decent amount of income from the remote mines, but even that isn't going to offset the damages that are being done here. Um, let's go back over to that uh, frontline room. I believe it was this one. Just to do some numbers here. Um, This nope, not that one. I want this one. So let's go one of these squads. It has twenty uh seven attack parts fully boosted. Okay, let's give that a look. So twenty seven times one twenty uh damage per part is thirty two hundred per creep. He has two of those, so times two potentially. So about you know, max damage of all these creeps would be about 18,000 of melee. 
and range is going to be a little bit less than that. We're going to have 13 range attacks times 4. So it looks like he's rolling about 40 times 13. This is per creep times 4 per squad times 3 squads. So as long as TG can keep the um, attackers at range 1, it's not that big of a deal uh, to out repair. But if they're able to to come in close, it starts doing about 18,000 hits per tick. So that would be um, divided by 100. That's the amount of energy you need to uh, offset the damage done per tick. So over a long siege, that starts to add up. Um, so current tick time is 84, 600 um, seconds in a day divided by 4. Approximately 21,000 ticks a day times 180. So TG would need um, 3.8 million energy a day to deal with um, the melee attacks. If it was just the ranged attacks, though, you only need 1.3 million. The problem is, you know, a double source room right now in Shard 2 produces about 400,000 energy a day. So He's using multiple rooms of energy to be able to deal with uh, just this squads in this room. So, as long as Tiga can continue uh, to keep the attacks up, um, you're going to see a lot of wasted energy on the side of TG. And over time, that's just going to slowly whittle them down. But, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Uh, I, hopefully I don't lose... Uh, a friendly neighbor. Um, see what I can do. Uh, I've already reached out to see if he needs any assistance. Um, but there isn't much I can do offensively at this point to um, sort of hit back. Uh, that's the issue with a lot of the players near Tiga. Um, Sai, um, Taki, uh, Muon, you saw his, a lot of his rooms being destroyed in the feed uh, about a month or two ago. So a lot of these players have struggled to deal with um, Tiga by hitting back. Uh, although I've heard that his bot does uh, you know, sort of lay off a bit if you're able to strike back. So uh, it'd be in interesting to see somebody actually uh, go ahead and take a room from Tiga. I heard it was done in the past, but it doesn't sound like uh, anyone's really made an offensive push um, in over a year. So, definitely something we'd like to see. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching another Screep's uh, analysis about uh, the current state of uh, this Tiga fight in my backyard. I, you know, it, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit subscribe down below for more Screep's content, tutorial content uh, for the game, as well as um, updates about some of the other game servers that I'm hosting. I'm currently hosting a sandbox server for Screeps uh, for new players and hoping to add a uh, persistent world, uh, which will have low tick times, be uh, at least a 4x4 sector, and uh, be open to everyone. Um, no restrictions on that one. It's just going to be sort of a free-for-all. Uh, I think I'm going to call it the Thunderdome. I encourage some combat. Also, have some other games in the the network. Uh, a game called Mindustry. Uh, have Minecraft server coming online pretty soon, um, as well as some other projects I'm working on. Well, guys, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you around soon.